In this part we will look at the concept of feature scaling. This will allow us to speed up gradient descent as illustrated in these two drawings, also called contour plots. To give a quick recap, these plots describe the value of j in function of theta1 and theta2 and every circle describes that on every point of that circle we get the same value for j so for all the combinations of theta1 and theta2 that lay on that circle, we get the same value for j. If you want a more detailed recap of what these contour plots mean, I recommend that you pause the video and check out this video which you can find on the channel. So basically, the more elliptical the contour plot, the longer convergence can take. And if we get a contour plot like the one on the right, convergence can be faster because gradient descent can take a more direct path to the minimum. So the goal of this video is to make sure we get a contour plot like illustrated on the right. Our first task is to understand why we might end up with such an elliptical contour plot. To fast forward, it's our dataset that describes how our contour plot will look like. To illustrate this, let's look at an example. Let's assume we want to predict the price of a car based on the mileage of a car and the age of a car. Then we get a hypothesis like this one, with x1 equal to the mileage and x2 equal to the age. Typically, x1 will have a large range of values, for example between 0 and 130,000 and x2 will have a small range of values, for example between 0 and 20. If we plot this dataset, it will look as follows. And if we now plot the cost in function of the parameters theta1 and theta2, also called the contour plot, we might see a figure like this one on the right. As you see, this is very elliptical. This is because a large range for a feature will typically result in a small range for the corresponding parameter and a small range for a feature will typically result in a large range for the corresponding parameter. This can be illustrated by following example. If we look how the real hypothesis of this example would look, the hypothesis will subtract some value for each additional mile the car has. So, if you assume that the car has a value of x1 equal to 130,000 and you would multiply it with a parameter theta1 that is equal to 5, you would subtract more than half a million dollar from the value of the car. That's way too much. So, it's easy to see that theta1 must be relatively small to be accurate. The same can be said for the age of the car, x2. Because the age is relatively small, let's say we have a training example where x2 is equal to 10, and if you assume that theta2 is equal to 5, you would only subtract $50 from the price of the car, that's way too low, so we see that theta2 should be a relatively large value. So, to recap, a big difference in ranges of the features, results in a big difference in ranges of the parameters and thus in an elliptical contour plot. So what we want to do is to make sure the features are in a same range of values. One way to do this is to divide the features by the largest value of that feature in our training set. For example, the largest mileage that occurs in our training set is 130,000 and the smallest mileage is 1,000. Also, the largest age is 20 and the smallest age is 0. Then we get the following ranges. Now you should scale x1 and x2 as follows. You divide them by the largest value of that feature that occurs in the training set. This way we will get a dataset that has features in a similar range and thus we will get a dataset that might look like this. Now the contour plot will look more like a circle and thus gradient descent can converge faster. A second method to scale our features is by applying mean normalization. This is done by taking all values of a specific feature, computing the mean and range of this feature and then you apply following scaling technique to all the values of that feature. For example, let's assume that the mean of x1 is 40,000 and the range is basically the largest value that occurs minus the smallest value that occurs. So, in our case we have a range of 129,000. Now we apply this scaling transformation to every value of x1 and we end up with all values of x1 between these two values. Now we can apply the same logic to all other features. Then we end up with all features being in a similar kind of range. For example, we can do the same for the age of the car. You might notice that the ranges of the features are not exactly the same. That's true, but this is no problem. 
As long as the ranges are not too far from each other, you still obtain a fast gradient descent algorithm. You should aim to get our features between minus 1 and 1. However, this isn't a strict rule. If our features are a little bit bigger or smaller than this range, this will be no problem, however try to stay close to this range. For example, if we have a feature x1 that is between 0 and 3, this is fine. If we have a feature x2 that is between minus 3 and 1, that is fine. However, if we have a feature x3 that is between 0 and 50, this is not fine and you should rescale this feature. Also, if you have a feature x4 that is between minus 0.004 and 0.3, this is not fine. You should also rescale this feature. So as long as the feature have a range that is close enough to each other, it's fine. You shouldn't worry if your features are not exactly between minus 1 and 1. So to get back to mean normalization. If we now plot the scaled dataset again, we might get a figure that looks as follows. As you see all data will now be centered around 0. This will give us a contour plot that's less elliptical and thus gradient descent can converge quicker. Now, you might be wondering, okay that's great, but what do we do after we scaled our features? That's a good question, therefore let us now look at a step-by-step -step guide on how we could scale our features. But first, if you liked the video so far, please consider subscribing. So, you are working on a problem and you notice that your different features have very different ranges. Then a first step consists of scaling our features so that they are on a similar range. One example to do so is by applying mean normalization. If you did this for your original dataset, you get a new dataset containing the scaled features. Next you train your model on the scaled features. After training you obtain your parameters theta that are trained on the scaled dataset. Now you are able to make predictions on new, unseen data. However, if you do this, you also need to transform this new unseen data with the same scaling transformation as you did on the training data. And finally, if you want to interpret the model's predictions in terms of the original scale, you should invert the scaling transformation. This is done by applying the scaling in the reverse order, just like this. So, I hope you liked the video and if anything is unclear, feel free to ask me in the comment section below.